Hey, John's Christian. I think this is the best way to explain it. I don't know. Um, this is such a convoluted thing. And the reason it's convoluted is because, for example, if I plot data, and let's say that I use the data that I have here, um, you're going to notice that what I did was I just said in this that the slope was 5 um, between these two variables. Um, so this right here is kind of weird because you'll see you'll see the equation and then you see what happens when I linearize it and that 5 is still here. So that's where I think kids get confused. So here's what I did to try to make this simpler. Um, and I can do this with my calculus kids, but my AP Physics 1 kids that aren't taking calculus, they have to quote unquote trust me on this. But I think this shows them enough that they kind of understand. So if I plot the curve, and let's say I get this equation, if I then rearrange it, so I'm going to take the 6x and put it first, so that's my b variable that you would have up here, and I'm going to put my a here, so my a constant, I guess it's not a variable. Um, my a constant, I'm going to put it here, and then plus 2. Um, this essentially is saying that my position in meters is equal to my original velocity times time plus one half of the acceleration times time squared. Um, and then I would add the original position in meters to it. So if I take my original equation and I do the derivative of that, then what it does is that's the velocity equation. So the velocity equation is now equal to 10x plus 6, which is really velocity is equal to acceleration times time plus the original velocity. Because really that's what acceleration is, and I know you know all this. Um, acceleration is just the change in velocity over that change in time. And so that's really what this equation is. I just, instead of this, now I have Vf minus Vo all over delta t. And so uh, now in this form, it's just going to be Vf is equal to the acceleration times the time. So Vf acceleration times the time plus that uh, original velocity. And so from there, I see that when I do the derivative, um, I take the 2. So this is going to be 2 minus 1. And I multiply the 5 times 2, and I get 10. So now I know that my um, slope here, which is 5, is got to be only 1 half of a. And so I have to multiply whatever the value is that I have for my slope. So that's looking here. Not really looking here, but looking here you'll see that this is 5. And so I've got to multiply that times 2. That gives me 10. If we go back to this, it's essentially the same thing. So my a variable really is, in the quadratic, my a variable is going to be what my slope is here. Um, and I don't know if it's coincidence or what it is, but you'll notice that you have to do 2a in order to solve this quadratic. I know, you know, up here you have 4ac, but that's all under the square root. But here you have to have 2a. So I don't know if there's, you know, something math-wise that's that does that or not. But um, I think, you know, in short, I just tell my kids, hey, let's write an equation for a quadratic. Let's see what that comes out to be. And then that really is this. So you can use Logger Pro. You can come up with a curve for uh, using position time. And then this number right here is really not the acceleration. It's only one half. So when they get that variable, which is the a, sorry, it's not a variable, it's a constant again. So when they get that constant a, that is only one half of the acceleration. So curve kind of lies to you a little bit. You have to multiply that number by two. However, that a value is also the slope if you plot the position versus time squared. So hopefully that helps. I think I understand it better because you asked that, so that's what I like. See you later.